to sell Joseph Rosenberg on the idea at a time when the old-time Hollywood people were advising Rosenberg that Snow White could only be a failure. When Snow White was successful, Walt announced a monster party for all of the Disney workers at Lake Norconian near Palm Springs, southeast of San Bernardino, California, where the cost of everything uh, the Disney workers wanted to order, food, drink, or whatever, would be taken care of by the Disneys. Okay, so they had this big party, okay, um, after Snow White was successful. Under the full moon, the Disney male and female workers, finally free of the tight rules of the studios, had what amounted to a Roman orgy and a large, nude, skinny dip at the lake. Almost all of the, the Disney workers participated in the orgy. Disney had only two options, either fire them all or ignore that the party took place. Walt chose the later option. And after that, no one ever dared mention the party in his presence. Now, again, this would be something that they would want to happen. Why? They could virtually blackmail anyone that worked for them. Uh, Disney is a wicked and evil and debauched company. And that, and again, I've said this, if the head is sick, the whole body's going to be sick. So, what happened at this party really was just a natural outcome of the rule in which they were under. In 1937, Walt and Roy took a trip to Europe where Walt dined with British royal family and met privately with H.G. Wells, the Masonic prophet, planner of what Wells and other Masons called the New World Order. Again, the New World Order. Here we go. This was talked about way back then, way before uh, George Bush Sr. ever said it on TV for the first time. In Paris, the League of Nations, which was the forerunner to the United Nations, gave him an award. Again, they only honor their own. The League of Nations, which is the equivalent of the United Nations, gave Walt Disney an award. After the success of Snow White, Disney chose Pinocchio to follow it. Many have asked why Pinocchio was chosen by Walt. If you look at the script, the puppet maker's wife is taken out of the original script, and there is an emphasis on the little wooden puppet visualizing becoming flesh and blood son to a man who created him. Here we have a boy with no soul who is told if he works hard, he will be given one. What a lie from the pit of hell that is. But again, you know, you don't even think about it until somebody actually brings it up to you. And you're like, yeah, that really is really not right. Um, going further, the script was definitely changed to have a storyline far more useful to mind control programming. For those who think that Walt simply recreated fairy tales on the screen... If one examines the changes that are made from the original storylines, they are changed to make them more useful for mind control. Both Snow White and Pinocchio have occult-type death, deaths and resurrections. Again, more blasphemy. In 1935, the Queen of England, who readers of my previous articles will realize is the Illuminati, involved in drug trade and is involved with the leadership of Freemasonry. Um, okay, so, again... Fritz writes a little bit disjointed here, and that's why the study probably appears that way. It's, it's kind of hard to follow sometimes. Let me say this again. In 1935, the Queen of England, um, who is involved in the Illuminati, the drug trade, and leadership in Freemasonry, the Queen of England, the Duchess of York, also Illuminati, selected Mickey Mouse Chinaware as gifts to 600 children. This was after Walt spent time with her in 1934. The League of Nations, which again was the pre-war equivalent of the United Nations, took time to vote its approval of Mickey Mouse. Why would the League of Nations, who is the forerunner of the United Nations, whose total goal is to bring about one world government and the New World Order, why would they care about Mickey Mouse? There is no doubt that Walt Disney had talent. There is no doubt from the record that powerful people wanted to promote him. No doubt that his 32nd degree Masonic membership... Yes, Walt was a 32nd degree Mason. And his Demolay activities helped boost his support. Remember we just talked about Demolay, that pedophile devil? that they, I believe they burned him at a stake. Yeah, and, and let's name, let's name our, our uh, boys Masonic fraternity after Demolay. Of all people, a pedophile. Again, it's just like naming a, 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 the uh, a battered wives house as the, the Ted Bundy battered wives house. Ted Bunny's House for Battered Wives. It's, it's insane. But his 32nd degree Masonic membership, his Demolay activities helped to boost his support and also helped Walt's bent toward the occult. 
Let's digress just to let people in on the Freemasonry's involvement with acting in motion pictures. The famous 233 Club was a famous Masonic chapter for actors who were Freemasons. Examples of actors who were Freemasons include John Ason, Gene Autry, Mont Blue, Humphrey Bogart, Douglas McLean, and John Wayne. How do you think they got to those positions? It, it really is this bad. You, you, you say, no, I can't. It's, you know what? It's way worse than even what I'm saying because I, I don't even know the half of it. I don't know all the things that have been done in darkness, and nor do I even want to know all of them. We are supposed to reprove and expose the unfruitful works of darkness and have no fellowship with them, and we are supposed to understand um, regarding Satan's devices, things regarding Satan's devices. Why? Lest he get an advantage of us. But we really don't even know the half of it. The Lord does. We're just scratching the surface. Then there is TV's Dick Clark. Um, he was one. I mean, how, how did Dick Clark, Mr. Youthfulness himself, say, you know, in that same position for so long, for so many years? Uh, is it just because he was a great guy? No, I don't think so. Examples of motion picture executives who were Freemasons include Ellis J. Arnold, uh, who was the president of the Society of Motion Picture Producers, William H. Hayes, czar of motion pictures, 1922 to 1945. He was also president of Motion Picture Production and Distributors of America, Inc. Benjamin B. Cahan, who was the VP and director of the Association of Motion Picture Producers. Carl Lamell, president of University Pritchers, Pictures Corporation until 1936. Frankie Mullen, Department of Information, RCA, Vice President of NBC from 1939 to 1946. You could, you, I could go on and on and on here. Uh, there's a whole bunch more that I'm not even going to mention. The Freemasons have made much of what Walt Disney's empire is what it is. Well, hey, if you've got Freemasons who have taken vows, blood oaths, to protect their blood brethren, the Freemasons... They've taken all these blood oaths, which are, you know, supersede any oath or allegiance to country, to God, to wife, family. They, they go higher than that. Of course they're going to promote their own. Uh, and, and again, that's one of the reasons Walt got to the position that he was at. Because the two Disney brothers' chief con contributions to the production of Disney films were the finances and occasionally the ideas used in a film, it is rather misrepresentative of things that Walt Disney got all the credit for the successes and quality of the Disney cartoons. He was showered with 700 awards. 700? And honors from important people, including 30 Oscars and a Presidential Medal of Freedom in 1964. 700 awards. Who has got that many high-level awards in the last 100 years? I'm not talking about winning a blue ribbon at, at the 4-H fair. I'm talking about 700 high-level awards, including 30 Oscars and the Presidential Medal of Freedom. That, which is highly esteemed among men, is an abomination in the sight of God. If Satan can, can present himself as a minister of light, it's no marvel that his ministers can be transformed into ministers of righteousness. Walt Disney and his empire was presented as a minister of righteousness, and it was nothing more than a lying angel of light, deceitful devil. That's all it was. Designed to take you and me and our children to hell is the ultimate goal, or to at very least defile them so that they could be ineffective for God. Fill their head full of fairy tales and lies. 700 Unbelievable. 30 Oscars. Who's won 30 Oscars? That's got to be a record. And that's why I said, I don't know if there's anybody that's been more highly esteemed in the last hundred years. Oh yeah, maybe you could say the Pope John Paul or whatever. But overall, there's a lot of people that hate him. Because they're not that same religion. Walt Disney, on the other hand, oh hey, everybody loves him. He has more of a broader appeal than any religious figure in the last hundred years. Because there's always going to be warring factions of religious figures. But hey, we can all get on the same page when it comes to Disney, right? In 1934, Walt Disney made a cartoon about a goddess of the mystery religions named 
Perseraphone. I'm sorry if I'm butchering the word. In the cartoon entitled The Goddess of Spring, the goddess Perseraphone Perseraphone is captured by Satan as his bride and sent to the underworld. With the agreement, she could return to the earth six months of each year. Disney. Great. A goddess, the mystery religion goddess, the goddess of spring. One of the major, it probably was celebrated on the spring equinox. It's just unbelievable. The Illuminati have rituals around Perseraphone. On December 21st, 1937, Disney premiered the first full-length color cartoon movie, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. This cartoon had taken in $1.4 uh, million in Depression Time money and three years to make. Over 750 artists worked on the film. Walt Disney had gotten the idea from a silent movie of Snow White, which he saw as a boy in 1917. The movie had an important occult theme to it, and it has been used for the occult mind control programming. When the 1940s got started, Disney was in financial difficulties. At this point, Nelson Rockefeller, one of the Illuminati families, hired his cartoon animators to make cartoons for South America, with the idea that the South Americans would remain loyal to the American capitalist hegemony. Rather than shift to rising ideologies of fascism and Nazism, if they saw the, the Walt Disney cartoons in, re, um, in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, on, on 8-24-42, Disney did its world premiere of Saludo Amigos, which was a 42-minute feature about a Latin America. Goofy became a gaucho, and a parrot teaches Donald Duck to dance the samba. I think I saw that when I was a little kid a few times. I thought it was stupid. In fact, come to think of it now, I really thought a lot of the cartoons that Disney made were really stupid and boring and dumb. I really did. Fantasia. I, I, I just didn't like them, you know. But anyway, that was just me. Uh, so, Goofy becomes a gaucho. Parrot teaches Donald Duck to dance the samba, as well as Disney art showing various landscapes in Brazil in the film. However, the film, The Three Caballeros... Uh, if it was meant to encourage South American loyalty to the American capitalism, it completely failed. The three cap caballeros showed a sexually lecherous Donald Duck who, in bad taste, tries to seduce a Latin woman. And again, I can remember clips of this in my head, watching this as a child. The mysticism was also seen as bogus. Although the Latin Americans hated the film, the establishment media's uh, magazine... I, it was called Look Magazine, praised it. Another reason that Rockefeller sent Walt to South America was to get him out of the way so that the government could settle the strike by the Disney workers. There was a strike at the time at Disney. Nelson Rockefeller was the government's coordinator of inter-American affairs, a good position considering how much of South America the Rockefellers controlled. The Rockefeller told Disney that Disney could beat the strikers, but that, it was while, but that was while Walt was in South America. FDR or Franklin Delano Roosevelt would see to it that the strike got settled. When Disney returned, he submitted to the powers that were and accepted the unions and the mafia's control. Another charge change for Disney was that in 1940, he and Roy turned Disney into a, quote, public corporation and initially sold 755,000 shares of common stock. The Boston... The Illuminati Boston firm, Kidder, Peacock, and Company, were the underwriters of the studio's public stock offerings. By 1940, the Disney studio at Burbank had become a miniature city with 1,000 men and women employees in 20 buildings and a 51-acre tract of land. After the U.S. joined World War II, Disney productions were made in part as a part of the American establishment. <clears throat> The very next day after Pearl Harbor, the military moved on to the Disney Studios, which leads this author to suspect that Disney was already part of the power establishment prior to the war breaking out. Well, of course they were. Disney, was, Disney actually made military movies and cartoons that taught different branches of the military many things. Now, these weren't ones that were introduced to the public, okay? They were propaganda movies for the Allies. One of the series of films was, was called Why We Fight, Disney made movies for the IRS to get people to pay their taxes. Now, I saw this IRS propaganda 
It was the biggest piece of propaganda trash on the planet. And it was made during then. It was a Disney cartoon. I had someone send it to me. Uh, it was probably a year, year and a half ago. And if you think the IRS is this wonderful organization, uh, you need to go up on the internet and just key in um, Aaron Russo, Freedom to Fascism, and just watch that. <laughs> And if you have any other doubts, just email me and I'll email you a whole packet on that particular subject. Not one penny of what you pay into the IRS goes to run in this country. Not one penny. Well, who says? You know who said that? The Grace Commission, which was a blue label um, labeled commission sanctioned by Ronald Reagan himself when he first took office to explore every facet of our government and to see what, where the money was going, how it was being allocated, and the, and the Grace Commission came back and said not one nickel of what is paid in the IRS goes into running this country. Not one. Well, then how does everything keep going? Well, there's things called gas taxes and sales tax and all kind of other taxes that are built into so many of the facets of our lives that we're not even aware we're paying. The IRS is a totally different deal, and, and it's part of this wicked, satanic system via the International Monetary Fund, and via the fact that we essentially have what they call fiat currency, which is a whole other rabbit trail. I don't just don't have time to go down today, but I can get you that information if you need to. You can just email me. My email address is on my homepage at Sermon Audio. <clears throat> Going further, so Disney films were top secret, and they concerned secret military weapons or secret psychological tactics for the Americans. For instance, one military film was entitled Army Psychotherapy, which taught army men how to instill fear and the basics about fear. Another, I mean, what a great kids film, uh, family film there. Another army film was entitled Prostitution and the War, end of quote. In the 1940s, Disney came out with the two full-length animation cartoons for Pinocchio and Fantasia, both of which were soon used for the Illuminati mind control programming. Now again, that's a whole other subject we're not going to really delve into. We just don't have time. Fantasia contains Schubert's sacred Catholic music, Ave Maria. Now it just so happens we have an Ave Maria University that just went up here on the outskirts of uh, Naples, where I live in uh, southwest Florida. And, you know, it's an absolute total abomination and satanic Catholic hotbed. But it's Ave Maria University. They got all these gigantic statues, this unbelievably rare marble they've used there, and it's a pure abomination. You know, it's it just total abomination. Um, I need to really go out there and pray against that garbage. But um, I, I don't even know where it's at. It's it's really weird. It's kind of like, you, you know, I had somebody tell me that it wasn't on like Google or something. You know, they tried to find it, and they couldn't find it. You know, I don't know if they're trying to hide it out there or what, but anyway, they, uh, Fantasia contains this uh, Schubert's sacred Catholic music, Ave Maria, which was used in, in a concluding segment, side to side, with a profane Night on Bald Mountain song, as well as six other classical pieces of orchestra music. As a feature cartoon, it was a flop, but as a programming, mind control programming tool, it was fantastic. Because of the explanation of the use of Disney films for mind control is very, very complex. This explanation is placed at the end of this chapter so that it won't interrupt the flow of the chapter's information. Now, I don't even know if we're going to get into that. I haven't got to the end of this yet. I mean, I don't know how many parts this is going to be. But if it gets too deep, I'm not going to delve into a subject on that. If you want to know more about that, I'll have the PDF and you can read it yourself. But when it gets into the mind control stuff, it can be very, very complex and very, very horrific and brutal to read when you see how they traumatize these children. You say, oh no, this can't go on. Well, then just please reference my last teaching I've done on pedophilia. And tell me that there's not anything that depraved man won't do to a child. Because there's nothing that a depraved, demon-possessed devil wouldn't do to a child. Nothing. No, no darkness that you could ever imagine in your own mind, they, they won't perform. Because they are of their father the devil, and of his works they will do. That's why they do it. They're not, you know, they're tares among wheat. The wicked go astray from the womb. They, be, they speak lies as soon as they be born. That's what the Bible says. So, 
Uh, if we go further, I mean, again, in that pedophile study and the study on Twilight, really does figure into what we're talking today. And those are the last two studies I've done. It really does tie in with this. A lot of cross, cross-confirmation. cross uh, Let's see here. The stories that were... Uh, let's see here. The Pinocchio film has been redone and released over nine times. Some of the full-length animated films to come out were... <coughs> excuse me. The Three Caballeros, The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad. Cinderella, Treasure Island, Alice in Wonderland, Robin Hood and His Merry Men, Peter Pan, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Sleeping Beauty. Very soon after these production of all these movies, the Illuminati and their intelligence agencies started using them for Illuminati total mind control programming. To see their misuse as programming scripts, one has to understand how the fantasy worlds of a program multiple are created and how the movie scripts are adapted to the programming scripts. With Disney had his animal nature documentaries. He edited and used narration to give the animals human-like characteristics, something he'd already been doing with animation. Disney played an important part in the Illuminati's plan to elevate animals and dehumanize human beings. One of the biggest Illuminati kingpins and leaders, Grand Master of the Prior de Zion, was Frenchman Claude Debussy. Claude Debussy it was a Merovingian which is one of the 13 families of the Illuminati who say that they can trace their lineage all the way back to Jesus Christ. This is where we get holy blood, holy grail, that lion nonsense, and that movie Bloodline, and all of this garbage we've seen come out on the History Channel and the Discovery Channel, and I've done studies on all of these, Bloodline, Holy Blood, Holy Grail, uh, there's another one too, The Lost Tomb of Jesus, where they all say that Jesus Christ was never really crucified. Him and Mary Magdalene, they whisked him off the cross, and him and Mary Magdalene moved up into Europe, and they had children. And uh, this bloodline that was produced is called the Merovingian bloodline. It's a total lie, blasphemous from the pit of hell. And it's just one more tool that Satan is going to use, and is using in the end times, in order to throw doubt on the word of God. But Disney played an important role in this Illuminati plan. One of the Illuminati's biggest kingpins, Grandmaster of the Prior de Zion, this Debussy guy, who was a Merovingian and was a Nataneer, which means the navigator or helmsman of the Priory de Zion from 1885 to 1918. Debussy was close friends with many of the top French occultists at the time. He is known to have been a close friend to both notorious Satanists Jules Bowles, Boys and McGregor Mathers. Mathers started the Order of the Golden Dawn. Now, whoa, where did we talk about that before? Go reference my teaching on C.S. Lewis, Mr. C.S. Lewis, which is the guy, you know, I still get emails, oh, you know, it's all your opinion. No, it's not my opinion. It's his writings, it's straight from his mouth, or his friends that wrote about him, who were his buddies, who he associated with. You know, evil communications, corrupt good manners. Who did C.S. Lewis hang around with? Well, he hung around with this uh, W.B. Yeats, who was part of the Order of the Golden Dawn, and this Mathers actually started the Golden Dawn, uh, Order of the Golden Dawn, which was also Aleister Crowley was a part of it. And he tried to take... Um, control over, but it really wasn't hardcore enough for him. He went on to do his thing. Where did, what did he then start? He started the OTO, the Ordo Templus Orientis. Which is one of the most satanic secret societies that we've known in the last hundred years. But Aleister Crowley in his early days was part of the member of the Golden Dawn. Anyway, Debussy was also a friend of the infamous uh, Dr. Gerald Inclaus and W.B. Yeats. Okay, and again, Yeats was a part of the Order of the Golden Dawn. C.S. Lewis hung out with these people. He, These were his friends. Or, or at least, you know, he hung out with people that hung out with them. Yeats, I know he did. This uh, Dr. Gerald in class, was also known as Pappas. Pappas was one of the men who, during his lifetime, was part of the interlocking occult directorate of occult groups. Debussy put some works of the previous 
prior design Grandmaster Victor Hugo to music. Debussy and his other powerful occult friends were influential with Monsignor Philip, whose Russian occult circles influenced the Russian czars and czarinas before Rasputin came around. Rasputin was another really sick, evil devil. Some of Debussy's works became operas. Interestingly, Walt Disney was extremely anxious to make a cartoon using Debussy's Claire, Claire Delane, evidently, which was a work he did. The work was done, but it was never shown to the public. Again, why would Disney, Mr. Wholesome, if he was so good, why would he be attracted and associating himself with some of the most unsavory, high-level occultists on the planet? Because he was one of them. Disney never found a place to use this work that we just mentioned from Debussy. It was originally done with animation with flying cranes for the occult extravaganza Fantasia. <clears throat> but when Fantasia ended up being too long, remember how his brother cut out 45 minutes of Fantasia? Well, when it became too long, Claire Delane was cut and shelled. That was Debussy's work that was part of Fantasia. It was again planned for the film... Make Mine Music, but then Blue Bayou, the song, was substituted in for it. Walt then used La Sacre de Printemps, or the Rite of Spring, music for Fantasia. Now, when we say the Rite of Spring, I don't mean R-I-G-H-T, the Rite, like a pagan rite, R-I-T. So that's what Walt used, this... this um, Rite of Spring music for Fantasia. It's witchcraft. Uh, essentially, it has a witchcraft theme to it. This piece of music was written as a pagan ritual where a virgin sacrifices herself by dancing to death. Yeah, this is Fantasia. Which is just a weird movie. I didn't even knew it was weird when I was a little kid. But it's pure witchcraft. Harry Potter, here we come. This was the start of it. Dr. Julian Huxley got involved with the production of Fantasia. Aldius and Julian Huxley are well known by conspiracy researchers for their roles in the New World Order. In the 1940s and the 1950s, the Illuminati began using Disney's Alice in Wonderland and the Wizard of Oz films as programming bases for their total mind control slaves. Alice in Wonderland had been done many years earlier by British William Cameron Menzies who also did the Freemasons' H.G. Wells' Masonic forecast of the New World Order entitled Things to Come in 1936 and the film Invaders from Mars. Okay, so this British William Cameron did that. Um, in 1944, Illuminati kingpin William Randolph Hearst, with some minor help from others, funded the Motion Picture Alliance. And then Walt Disney became a co-founder and its first president. Again, look at who he, look at the circles that he runs with. In the early 1950s, Walt turned his attention from animated cartoons to other projects, such as, quote, true life adventures, television shows, and the creation of Disneyland. In 1952, Walt Disney, or Walter Disney, spelled his name backwards to create the name of another corporation, Rhett Law. Now, we already mentioned Rhett Law earlier. Rhett Law is Walter spelled backwards, which is one of the main things that occultists do. They play music back... I mean, high-level occultists are encouraged to play music backwards, to walk backwards, to talk backwards, to write backwards. It has some kind of demonic... It opens you up to demonic things. So he started this corporation called Retlaw. Uh... <clears throat> Walter spelled his name backwards to create this, this Retlaw Corporation. Roy and his family saw the move as an attempt to cut them out of the financial picture. In 1954, Walt Disney and ABC made an agreement. ABC would directly invest half a million U.S. dollars as well as guarantee $4.5 in loans for the construction of Disneyland. This made ABC, American Broadcasting Company, one-third owner in Disneyland. In return, Walt Disney agreed to produce a regular television series for ABC. Remember, too, that ABC's president, Leonard Goldstein, was a good friend of Ronald Reagan. Yeah, well, so was Walt Disney. Do you see all the tie-ins here? Back and forth, back and forth. This wicked corruption. 
1961, Disney bought out the ABC investment, also labeled Paramount, for $7.5 million with cash and notes. And to bring all this up to date, later on July 1931, 1995, Disney merged with Capital Cities ABC. Uh, actually, Capital Cities has long been a CIA front company, just like Bank of America. So now we have the government absolutely totally tied in with this because the CIA were the ones that did all the MK Ultra mind control programming. Maybe not all, but a lot of it. And these MK Ultra mind control um, program has uh, a lot of this has been declassified, and you can, and you can do through FOIA or Freedom of Information requests. You can find this stuff out for yourself. I'm not making this stuff up. What better way or what better place to do mind control programming? than Disney World in their underground tunnel system. Why? Because your 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 guard is totally been lowered. Hey, I'm in Disneyland. It's the land of wholesomeness and goodness. Nothing bad could happen to me here, yet you have no idea what's going on even under your feet when you go there. Perfect place to do this. So actually um, so the merger placed Disney squarely within the CIA ranks, although it had been in bed with them for its entire history anyway, the Illuminati-controlled corporations of Coca-Cola and the drug firm Johnson & Johnson, now I have nothing to do with that drug firm, even though my last name's Johnson, uh, they became sponsors for Disney's early TV shows. And yes, I just said Coca-Cola. Oh yes. Not them. They're puritanical as well. Oh, okay. Right. Sugar is one of the main ways one of the main addictions that Americans have. They bleach it, they refine it. I went to the factory and saw what they did. I, I, I took my daughter recently to uh, U.S. Sugar in Okeechobee, and we saw what they did. And, and I mean, they're, it's, it's basically like a drug when they get through it. They strip it of every single possible thing that could be good. And it's purely a chemical when it comes out on the other end of that process and after they bleach it and do everything else to it. And it's addictive. I'm not saying a little bit's going to kill you, but a lot of kids nowadays that grow up, and that's all they do. Oh, they drink it by, you know, the liter. I just had a liter of Coke today, Mom. Well, what does that do? It eventually destroys your pancreas. It ends up creating all kind of blood sugar imbalances, and you are a walking candida yeast factory if you're eating that stuff all the time. Why? Because candida and yeast, which becomes systemic in the bloodstream, people think, oh, it's only a yeast infection. Like women, no, 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 no. Yeast gets into the bloodstream, fungus, and it essentially feeds off this sugar that you're putting in your body all the time. And it's very, this sugar is easily convertible into glucose because it's been stripped of everything. It's not like other types of sugars that occur in nature that are actually with like fruit sugar or fructose or things of that nature that are actually associated with minerals and vitamins and things. This type of sugar strips your body of its minerals. It is addictive. It feeds candida and yeast infections. So many of the people that my, my daughter goes to school with, uh, some of them are, are really good athletes, but they have no energy whatsoever. And it's because they're walking candida factories. They're, they're, what it does is it starts to make your food decision choices for you. If you're loaded with candida, don't think that you're not going to crave sugar all the time. And then that craving begets more craving because you're just feeding the yeast and the colonies begin to grow in your bloodstream, literally, systemically. You gotta kill that stuff. I, I'm telling you, the best way I know of how to kill it is that mild silver protein. That's the best product I know of to kill it. And you also need to do a good probiotic. But you don't take the silver and the probiotic together. Get your probiotic in the refrigerated section at health food store. The silver that I sell, not that I sell, but that is on my website, will is the best thing to eradicate it that I know of. Um, you go to dr-johnson.com, www.dr-johnson.com, and you can read about it. You need to use at least 2,000 parts per million, and if you're a woman, you need to start slow if you take this, because uh, when you start killing candida in the body with this silver, you're going to go into what they call a Herxheimer or a die-off reaction, and it will make you tired, because it's killing all the bad guys. Your body has to get rid of it. Make sure you drink plenty of water. And email me, and I'll get you the email. I have a whole newsletter I've written on this. Sorry I went off on that rabbit trail, but when I saw Coca-Cola there, see, there, it's just one more tool, one more thing to get us addicted to something the Illuminati wants to introduce into all of our lifestyles. 
Coca-Cola's one aspect of it. Disney's one aspect of it. Drugs are one aspect of it. The perverted education system is one aspect of it. Chemtrails are one aspect of it. Fluoride in the water supply and in the toothpaste, that's another aspect. All the chemicals they put in the food. Name it. Almost every single aspect of our lives, there's some form of evil intermingled with it in a very tangible way to destroy us, to destroy us in some way, shape, or form, whether it be body, soul, or spirit. And that's just one example. So anyway, uh, going further... Walt Disney Productions then shared their portions with others. And the man who helped Walt finance Disneyland was the executive vice president of ABC. His name was Kintner, last name. Walt Disney got the Illuminati Stanford Research Institute to determine what would be the best site for Disneyland. A retired Navy Admiral, Joe Fowler, was in charge of constructing both Disneyland and Walt Disney World. So how do admirals fit into this power structure? Admirals are briefed each day and are given information concerning the secret power structure. Most men who are at that military level are Illuminati. Now, I've heard this over and over and over again. In order to achieve a certain ranking in the military, not every single time, but most of the time, you typically have some type of Illuminati connection or bloodline in order to be a general or an admiral or above a certain rank. Most, uh, let's see here, most men who are at that military level are Illuminati, or at least controlled by the system. Within the last few years, there's been an intense effort to weed out any admirals who are not loyal to the Illuminati. Morgan, Morgan Evans, who lives in Malibu, and who um, may, may be the f- most famous of the, quote, Morgan clan, was, one, was the one who created the spectacular landscapes for Disneyland. Walt Disney World... In Epcot in Florida, oh, he, he created the spectacular landscapes for Disneyland, Walt Disney World, and Epcot in Florida. According to CIA informants opposed to the New World Order, the CIA contractors were brought in to build the underground tunnels under Disney World in 1977. These contractors were sworn to secrecy, but were only informed on a need-to-know basis why the CIA was involved with an amusement park. To work on the secret tunnel project took a, quote, above-top-secret clearance. Now, this is the same clearance, or a similar clearance, that they use when they build underground bases, uh, like in places like Dulce, New Mexico, or wherever else they have their underground bases. A major programming center was actually constructed under Lake Holden. The tunnel system was built for programming trauma-based mind control slaves. It was built of concrete with steel reinforcement. Lake Holden lies just to the northeast of the Orlando International Airport and just south of I-4, Interstate 4. It is close to what he refers to as Range 29E on quad maps. It is, as the crow flies, about 12 miles from Disney World itself. This is this underground base. In spite of draconian measures of secrecy, numerous lawsuits of federal and state were filed over the years by victims trying to expose the Disney World programming tunnels so that finally the programming center was dismantled, cleaned up, and maintenance tunnel level and a casting tunnel level were opened then to the public. During its heyday, the programmers, both military and intelligence men, had exotic offices underground with unusual programming equipment. It does not take any imagination to realize that if Disney carried mind control programming above and below ground, they would need tight security forces to protect their secrets. And again, they've got their own police force. Indeed, such was the case, and such is the case. Disney amusement parks have been granted draconian powers wherever they have been built. The Disney parks have also employed armies of spies dressed like tourists to spy on Disney employees. If the amusement park workers did anything slightly out of place... They were and still are reported by spies in the camp. And they have often often lost their jobs. Boy, talk about having to look over your shoulder all the time. For instance, one co-worker who had 10 years with Disney was caught discussing his divorce with another co-worker. Since divorce doesn't fit the wholesomeness image that Disney wants, when the spy dressed as a tourist reported his conversation, he lost his job. 
Many workers tried to tell their personal horror stories of Disney's draconian rules and their draconian private police force, but most of the time, Disney has had the power to suppress and intimidate away any bad publicity. An exception to that is the recent November 4, 1996 Napa Valley Register article on page 2D entitled, The Critics of Disneyland Say Security Abusive Isn't that security is abusive inside the Magic Kingdom. That was the name of the article. UCLA law professor David Sklansky commented about Disney's police, saying, quote, one of the major problems we have is nobody really knows what they are doing. How often they stop, interrogate, or search people. They are not subject to the same sort of regulatory controls as the normal police forces are. It's like they got their own little world that, that they're, they're in there. Okay. Uh, that's all I got for today, and um, we're going to go ahead and continue this next time, and I uh, uh, just want to thank everyone. This is the first teaching I've done after my, my dad's passed away, and I, I'm not doing the report on that, or, or the update or teaching I'm going to be doing on that today. I want to finish this uh, thing on Disney first, and then I'll probably do one um, regarding my dad. I want to thank all the people that, you know... The cards I've received, all the hundreds of emails I received uh, from, you know, and the support there. Uh, just praise the Lord Jesus Christ for, for you and for um, my listeners. And um, the Lord did truly and is seeing us through. And um, again, I'll give a full update on this in, in the near future. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and close this out in a word of prayer today. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this time that you've given us. Letting us come together, Lord, God, in another another week. Uh, I just pray, God, you bless my listeners, um, those that are here gathered right now. I pray, God, that your angels would encamp around about us, that you would forgive us for any and all sins we've committed, as we forgive those who have sinned against us, Lord, that the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart would be pleasing in your sight, O oh Lord, that you'd use these messages, Lord God, to expose the darkness, to open eyes, Lord God, to just for your glory, Lord, that many would actually even be saved as a result of your truth going forth. We praise you, Lord God. We thank you. We honor you as King of kings and Lord of lords, the Alpha, the Omega, the first and the last. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.